What's up everybody? It's Amy here from Amy's Art Alchemy. Welcome back to my channel, the place to go to for tips, tricks, tutorials, and all things art related. So it's time for me to create another batch of artist trading cards for the A3 ATC swap group and I thought I would just turn the camera on and see what happens. I have several things on my desk. Uh, the rest of my desk is a mess, but you're just seeing this part. But I have several things pulled out. I have some watercolors. I have a couple jelly prints that I've already done. I have some random scraps. Uh, I have some book text. I've got my Stabilo wall. Uh, some inks nearby. And some watercolor paper. So. We'll just give this a go and see what comes of it. I already kind of have a theme in mind. I love flowers, as most of you all know. And with this whole quarantine going on and chaos and all the creative ideas flowing, um, it's not a new quote. This quote has been around for a long time. Um, the quote, out of chaos comes creativity. So I thought that would kind of be a good theme during this time. And I was thinking of titling the cards contained chaos. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, maybe some messy watercolor florals. Um, the jelly prints are kind of chaotic looking and messy. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I may uh, I may change my mind completely throughout the whole thing, but that's that's kind of what I have in my brain right now So we will see what comes with it. So I first started off. I already have my five Artist trading cards cut to size and these are just a hundred and forty pound Watercolor paper and I've already stamped the back. This is just my Plain stamp. I haven't filled it in yet, but I will fill that in at the end so I completely plain and it's just 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, I'm kind of winging this as I go. If I put this on, I may not be going directly on the watercolor paper. I'm not sure. I just thought I would turn on the camera and see what came of it. So the May A3 ATC swap is coming up very soon. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna first set these aside. Oh, pulled out a couple jelly prints. I think the two that I'm gonna be working with are, this was just when I was cleaning off the plate. These two pages are actually when I was just uh, cleaning off the jelly plate, what was left over. And that always seems to be the prettiest when you're not trying. So I think I'm gonna mix with these two pages and kind of see where it goes. I don't, I don't want this video to be too long. Of course, I always say that and sometimes they're really long. Um, I may speed up the process. I may stop it completely. I don't know. But for right now, I'm just going to record and see how things go. So I think I'm going to start off. I'm going to use this as the back, I think. So I'm going to just use my two and a half inch by three and a half inch ATC size card and pick out a couple spots and trace it so I can cut that out. So, I really am enjoying hosting our Artist Trading Card Swap Group. If you're not a member of it, um, we are always taking new members and I would love to give you more information about it. I'll be sure and put that in the description below this video. So let's see what we got. If you hear scratching or weird noises in the back, it is my little dogs, my little studio friends they always hang out with me got me some water close by i just grabbed a paintbrush i'm not really i'm not really picky to be honest i do not consider myself um, good at watercoloring but i wanted to do some messy florals messy loose florals and yeah you don't you don't i don't think you really need to be good at messy loose florals so we will kind of see how this goes and I think I'm gonna go with you can't see that I'm sorry I think I'm gonna use the what am I using Prima marketing pastel dreams because these are kind of lighter colors um, I had also got out my decadent pies I may mix that for the leaves or some 
I don't know, some bronzy gold accents. I don't, I don't know. We'll just see how this goes. But I do want these just very loose because I was going to do some loose line stitching. I almost automatically went and started doing it big. Got to remember my cards are small. So you're not going to see this much just because it is, I'm doing it really light. But you will see it more whenever I start adding some detail to it. So I don't really want all of my watercolor pulling in one spot. I just just kind of want a loose, loose rough sketch of the blooms, kind of, kind of what I'm thinking. And then I'll just dip it in again to give some darker outside edges here and there. I really need to practice with watercolor more. I, I love it. I just it's not something I go to all the time just because I don't feel like that is my strong suit so I should work on that so maybe it will be okay I think I'm just gonna let that dry and go ahead and go to the next one and then we will see how this comes out hopefully that is not too big and that's too big so that one <laughs> won't get used that's a practice run this is just 140 pound watercolor paper that I'm working on, um, just that I used to cut out those. So, all right, that'll give me a size, size reference. That one was way too big, and that is not diluted enough. So really, I'm just kind of doing a blob with a very faint outline of petal shapes. And look at me, I'm doing it big again. What is wrong with me? Is that one small enough? It looks too big. All right. And I'm not gonna have time to edit this video. So you get to see my mess ups. Try to keep it smaller. And that is too concentrated, so I'm just going to dip that away a little bit. Ooh, I almost did it again. Yeah, really, I'm not doing any type of shape. I know this is really hard to see, but it, just bear with me in a minute. You'll you'll see it a little bit better. And I just realized I just got carried away and started doing all of them in blue. We are going to need some in a different color, so. Hopefully this turns out okay. <laughs> you know how sometimes you have great ideas and then it just turns out to be not so great ideas? All right, should I do, looking at this, I think, let's, I really like pink flowers, but let's, let's swatch this out. I have it swatched right there, but Trying to see what would look better on this card. Purple or pink? Uh, you know what? Let's do one of each. Life's too short, right? One of each. And that is definitely darker. Try to get focus there. It's a lot darker than the than what I did the blue, but that is okay. I can kind of fade it out a little bit. Maybe. I said I, I need to work on that. I need to work on watercolors, jelly printing, a lot of things I need to work on. But I just have fun. 
And it's getting big again. Oh my goodness. Come on, Amy. Go with it. We're going to leave it and see how it comes out. If I need to do another one, I will. And I am just turning this paper as I go because there is no point in wasting it. This is just, um, I already told you it was 140 pound watercolor paper. I don't use expensive stuff. I know it looks better. The quality looks better when you use expensive paper, but um, I just don't, I don't budget for expensive paper because there's other things I want and there's definitely other things that are needed. So this is just the Canson watercolor paper. Alright, so the purple one I think is a good size. I think I need to go back and add a little bit more here. May not have given myself much much room there. I'm not really sure. I may have to get another piece of paper. Let's just see where this goes. All right, and I don't know about you, but I hate watching paint dry. Unless I'm taking a snack break and eating at the same time. And well, yeah, we're not doing that. So just turn the volume down for a second because I'm gonna blast this with the heat gun. Okay, I think that's okay. I uh, will probably go back and add a little bit more watercolor, but it's always easier to add than take away. That's the way I feel about it so all right now I'm trying to decide what I want to do next I know I want some line work and I'm sorry you hear my little doggy in the background I think I'm just gonna go straight in with a sharpie because that's what I tend to do and I'm gonna go ahead and do this big one just just in case so this is nothing fancy so don't expect something spe spectacular I just kind of make loose, loose shapes and then do a couple up the center and then down like this to start with. So I'm just kind of staying, I'm not really picking up my pen or my, my Sharpie. Just kind of doing some loose, loose lines. And some of them do not even go where the watercolor is and that is okay. This purple one I, I really like, so hopefully I don't. Uh, I like that one. I like that one, but I'm afraid it's too big. I'm not liking that one. But I'm still going to finish it because it's not complete yet. There's still a few things I would like to add to it. I told myself I would do this more, just get loosened up. And I got a little bit carried away with that bloom right there. We will see how it goes. I think I've said that a lot this video. We will see how it goes. And 
and I know that just looks like a bunch of scribbles because that's pretty much what it is. Now I think I'm going to go in. I'm sorry, I did not mean to slam that down. I know that sounds horrible when people go back and watch those. I've got my Stabilo All, or do I want to use ink? Let's see. I actually have my inks close by. Uh, you know what? Nope. What are you going to do? Stabilo All. Goodness, that felt heavy. It's not really that heavy. My back is really bothering me today. Okay, let's see. And I'm just going to go over my Sharpie lines. And the reason why I do the Sharpie as well is because I really like the different dimensions that it gives in the line work. So, let's see what I mean in a minute, I think. I think <laughs> maybe it's just my own opinion of it and that is perfectly okay art is in the eye of what is it how does that saying go I'm talking like you're gonna actually talk back and me hear you leave it in the comments if you know what I'm talking about oh you know what I'm thinking of beauty is in the eye of the beholder <laughs> not art is in the eye of the beholder I think I totally messed that up I do that a lot. That was just kind of funky looking. We got to add some extra, extra in there. So my April artist trading cards, I did little Easter bunnies, obviously for Easter. And that was the first time I decided to um, make a process video out of it. So if you're interested in seeing that, I will put that in the link below. Um, also, I know I mentioned it, but I would love for you to check out our artist trading card swap group. It's an international monthly ATC group and it is just so much fun. I I told my husband I said we you know we started off as members and now everybody's just I feel like we're all friends. So now I'm just touching a little bit of the Stabilo All. If you're not familiar with a Stabilo All pencil you should definitely try it out. They are water soluble pencils so you can move that ink around. And I'm not doing all of it. I'm just doing little, little parts of it because I still like the pencil look. Let me see if I can get closer to that. So just, I like some parts to look washed out like that. And then I like some not to, so. I definitely want the little scribbles in the middle darker. And then I may dry this and go back and add some more of the watercolor actual watercolor I'm, I'm not sure once again we will just see how it goes so Joe's gonna say that again so I actually have a lot of things going but I love to stay busy I started a um, I'm calling it the a3 floral 365 challenge and um, I was doing really good posting posting about it on my Instagram and then I just haven't posted much about it because there's other things I want to say on there and I feel like a five posts in a day may be too much coming from me so I don't know I'll probably just post my post like a group of them you know here and there showing the days, the flowers that I did. They are nothing like these. I mean, they're, they're um, I don't know, they're a little bit more detailed. These are just kind of loose. I mean, they're not fancy detail. Don't go there and expect some masterpiece because really I just enjoy flowers and um, have fun with it.
Oh, I don't like what I did there, but we'll see. And I know this is more than five. Now, if you're curious what I'm working on, this is freezer paper. I love to use freezer paper as my under paper, especially when I'm working with like the glossy side, the plastic coated side is great for watercolors because you can mix your watercolors. I don't know if you can see that. But um, I also really, really love using it for my acrylics. I started out with a clean sheet because I didn't want it to be too distracting, but I love filling it up and cleaning off my stencils on it and wiping off my brushes on it and then I end up with this beautiful under paper under paper <laughs> can't speak and then I either cut it in strips and use it in tags or I can't draw the flower like that or I just use it as a whole page in my journal as a background or you know just different things or I just look at it <laughs> I'm not going to go over that because I think I'm going to cut that part out. Okay, I know that looks super messy right now. I may actually go back in and add some ink or darker, but I'm not just yet. So I'm going to dry this again, so pause the volume, fast forward it, whatever you need to do, because I'm going to use my heat gun again. So, I'm looking at this and I had originally planned to do green on the stem. <laughs> well, that didn't go as planned, did it? We'll see how they how it looks when I'm done. Let's scoot that over. Okay, let's just start with this one. I'm going to just this thick paper. I'm going to scoot this over. And I'm just going to loosely, not really fussy cut because loose. Those two, fussy cut and loose, do not go together <laughs> around the image. Um, not necessarily up against the black line because I want part of the messy watercolor to show through. but I also don't want it straight across like a circle either so or like my my petals just completely straight it's a beautiful thing about flowers no two flowers are the same and I, it's just something they I just love them I love them you, you will never get the same even if it's from the same plant there will be something different I know you all know that I just felt like saying it. <laughs> All right, that's a little, a little too straight going right there. So we may have to add a little bit more color or something there. All right, so let's see kind of what I, what I had in mind. I was thinking something like this. Of course, this will be backed on the hard paper. Something like this. Um, that I, I like that, actually. Uh, have, whenever I am doing my art journals, um, I love the Canton mixed media paper, too, and I paint all the way out to the sides. Like, let me get my, let me get my journal to show you what I'm talking about. Like they are regular size, regular size papers, but like I'll paint clear to the edge. Um, let's see, like like this one for instance. Like I painted it the pattern all the way to the edge, and then like this isn't the one that goes with it. But then I save the little perforated piece and use it in my collage work. So I don't. I'm still working on filling this one up. It's It's got, I think I counted it to be 100 and, 
80 pages or something. So I don't know. I may do a flip, flip through of that at some point, but it's kind of fun. That was just a little side note on where these came from. <laughs> but I had them on my desk because I was working on that journal the other day and I haven't moved them, to be honest. I need to clean off my desk, but I was ready to go on to the next project. So I don't know if I want to collage some of these pieces on there or not. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play a little bit and see what, see there's not even much on that one, but I'll still save that even though there's not much on there because it really makes for a great collage piece. So if you do not save these and you love collage, which that means you probably already do save them. So, you know what, let's just tear a couple pieces off and, whoa, I'm gonna fall out of my chair. And see how this goes. I like that. I don't like it going straight. Like it's okay if this part's straight because it's gonna go across there, but I don't know. Also, I have, here's another one of my favorite techniques. Just taking book paper and scotch tape and pushing it down. Make sure there's not any bad words or anything there and just burnishing over it with my fingernail. This is an antique, um, not antique. Uh, it's a older, what are these called? Reader's Digest books, I have a bunch of these. And then just pulling it off and you get the text in the background, um, but it's, it's not full. So once again, if you do collage work, you, you know that technique, I'm sure, but there's just a little tip this video is supposed to be tips, tricks, and tutorials, so if you have not done that, there's two tips. Save these and do this, so there you go. Give it a whirl. People still say that, a whirl? I do. <laughs> okay, so. I think since I put the words down and I, I just stuck it down like right away without even, no, it's still loose. Um, I may not want the piece that has, oh, you know what? This has got this. Mm. I have more of these. Maybe I should get up and grab those really quick because these are always fun to use. Let me do that. Let me pause this and grab the other ones that I have that are not on my desk. I'll be right back. Okay, I literally just reached in and grabbed some. I figured if there's nothing here, oh, which look, ha <laughs> If there's nothing here, then it's not meant to be, but look, I, I actually did pretty good to just reach in and grab. Actually, you know what, I, I say that, I think it's because I tend to use these colors a lot, so I'm bound to have that. I don't think it was anything <laughs> magical just I have these colors so of course I'm gonna more likely to grab it and that one's a no oh, I kind of like the black and white stripe of that let's see I got this one too of these colors so ooh this is this is good it's got all three a little bit of collaging. Speaking of collaging and the artist trading card swap group, I also started a project where I am turning 
repurposing cereal boxes and going to be binding myself up a book of the friendships that I made in my swap group. So episodes one and two are already posted. If you were interested in seeing that, it's just me collaging some things. I wanted to use things that the artist sent me with their swap. So it's, if you're interested in seeing. I don't know if I want to. I really am liking these colors. I like that. But I know I want, and this, this video may end up being too long. You may see me create one and then show you all of them at the end. I know I want to put my title, I mean my, you know what? I'm, I'm guessing myself too much and when I do that, it never turns out good when I guess myself. So we are just gonna start gluing them down. If it turns out ugly, then I will create more and not swap these. I do like to still take my time because the person that is going to be receiving this, which I don't know who it is yet, um, they put a lot into their cards too. So I like to, you know, I don't want to just throw something down there. I mean, it looks like I'm doing that, but I'm really thinking about it. You know, it's not like I'm just filling it full of stickers, which that's okay if you do that. But, you know. And I'm gonna go through all of it with some stitching, so I'm just doing some loose. I actually am liking it. Little bit of glue. No, I'm not gonna be stitching on the, f well, yeah, no, I'm not gonna be stitching on the flower, so. It's gonna get a little bit more glue. Let me say guys, I do appreciate everybody that has subscribed. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to. Um, I actually design and create free printables that I give to all my subscribers just as a, say, a way of saying thank you for subscribing. So I do really enjoy um, people being here, leaving comments. Um, I do go through and read those and it, it means a lot. It's, it's actually a lot more work than I thought creating a YouTube channel. Um, I don't think I'm ever really going to have a huge amount of subscribers, but I'm not, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it just to have fun and share some tips, tricks, tutorials along the way. And I'm all about giving giving. I am definitely a giver and so I wanted to give something back to the people that follow me. So I do a free printable every month. You can check that out. There's a whole playlist for that. So I think I'm just going to complete one whole card. Usually what I do if I'm doing a series, which I don't always do series, um, it seems like it because the past three months I have. If I do a series, I will do like what I did a while ago. I will draw the flowers, all the flowers, I will cut all the flowers, and then I will collage them. But I kind of want to see how it's going to look first. No, I don't. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with it. We're gonna sit this one aside. There's definitely going to be a lot more that goes to this, but this is where we are at so far. I hope my camera setup is okay. Um, kind of hard with the angle. I don't really have anything fancy, but I make it work and I am very appreciative for what I do have. So hopefully the angle is okay. I really liked that purple one. I may end up going back and doing another purple one instead of this pink one. I usually use pink more than purple, but I don't know something about that, that purple against this jelly print looks Looks really good. This one I'm kind of feeling like does not need it. Maybe I will just do another. We don't want something about Greg in the background, whoever Greg is. I don't know, maybe I do like it. I do like the little squares. I like that it gives the texture.
I'm thinking about this too much. I know I am. need a little bit there we go maybe just a little bit more book text up there maybe just cut off part of this I do think I can speed up this process of where I glue these to the back of these because that's going to take time and that's just really boring to watch. So I'm going to pause this and glue all these to, back, to the backs of these and then we'll add the last few details of the cards. And so I'm going to pause this and I will do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I still haven't figured out a good angle. To record sewing but this really isn't a sewing video anyway so I'm just gonna put some stitches and then I will give you guys a close-up but kind of what I'm thinking is I want to do a mix of stitches I want to do um, I first thought about doing some leaves there's like some florals and some leaves but I think I'm just gonna do a mix of straight stitch and zigzag stitch so, and then I switched my thread to black because I think black will really make it pop. So, okay, I'm back. Now keep in mind when I show you these, I planned for them to be messy stitches because I wanted it to be chaotic um, because the, the whole theme is contained chaos, finding creativity in chaos. So. Um, the stitches are meant to be messy so I just did a mixture of zigzag and straight stitch oops I need to cut off that thread And I will do a close-up of all these when I'm completely through. So now that I finished the stitching um, and I have them all facing the right way, it's time to go ahead and add the last final touches. Now I was thinking I love pressing flowers and um, in the spring and summer I've got so many YouTube videos planned that I will be publishing of a lot of flower crafts and it just got me thinking how these look like pressed flowers and just smushed down on the page. I wanted to really make it look like pressed flowers how you would tape them in a journal. So I thought I would put a just a little piece of masking tape. Actually I think first I want to make the masking tape look a little bit aged. And normally I would do this with my um, Tim Holtz dis uh, Distress Ink, the coffee stain or whatever it is, tea stain, I, can, I can't remember. But since I have my watercolors and some other inks over here, I'm going to do it a different way. Guess I could just put it down and then tear it after, huh? That would that probably would have been the smart smart thing, but sometimes I'm just not that smart. <laughs> or don't do things the easy way. That that should be the way to say it. I shouldn't talk ugly about myself, but sometimes I go about things the hard way. I mean it's masking tape. I don't know how well it's gonna work on it anyway but I don't want a lot I just kind of want a little see see how that freezer paper works 
I just want a little bit of color on it. So with it being um, the tape, I don't know how well it's going to stay on there anyway. So I may have to use the inks that are right over here beside me. But we're going to give this a go first because why not learn something? It either will or it won't. And that one's dark, but I know that it will probably... Okay, yeah, I like it. You know, I've done this before. I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking about. I know I've done this before. I just usually go for the distress ink because it's, I don't know. <laughs> Cause I usually don't have my watercolors out, I guess. Okay. Take a little piece of that and we're just gonna put it across the stem like it is a pressed flower. And I know this will not stay well. So I'm going to add, sorry, I'm sticking down my threads, some glue to that because I've already finished my stitching. So we are on the last little bit and I hope this turns out good. I don't think it needs to be that long and I can't tear it now. Now that it's got glue on it, it's sticky. I like it. I like the different element that gives. What do you think? I don't know how it looks on camera. In person, I think it looks okay. We will see the five people that get it, what they thought about it, I guess. Again, be honest, if it just wasn't really for one, I'd like to know if this was a video you're interested in seeing, if this is a, but I, I would like to, I would like your feedback. I really do read my comments. Sometimes I don't get to them right away because I have kids and a family and, but I do read them. See, it doesn't even matter how it's going across, I don't think, because I'm so excited for all my flowers to start blooming. I did not add glue to that. Oh, but look, it's sticking really well. But I think I need to add some glue anyway. Um, really excited for my all my flowers to start blooming. That just, I love being in the garden. Unfortunately, because my spinal cord injury, I can't really get down and work in the garden, but I love saving my seeds and of course admiring them and photographing them and then referencing the photographs later whenever I sit down to draw. I also love, uh, my husband built us a really nice covered patio and we'll sit out there with a glass of tea or if it's at night a glass of wine or something and just, just admire them. I mean, it's just so beautiful. I, I really enjoy, really do enjoy that time of year when everything is in bloom. Of course, normally this time I would have already bought a whole bunch of new flowers. And because we are still on quarantine, I have not been able to do so. But that is okay. I would rather be safe. I know a lot of people are still out doing that, but I am what you would consider a high-risk person because I have some other underlying health stuff and I just it's just not it's not worth it it's, it's just not it's not worth risking that so I stay home except for doctor's appointments which I cannot miss okay so now I got the tape on there and I'm really liking that, so I'm glad, I'm glad I did that. So now I'm down to my last few things. Um, I was really wanting a some my title on there, create, uh, Out of Chaos Comes Creativity, but the title on the back is gonna be Contained Chaos. So 
Uh, I don't really know if I have the room to put it because I, I went kind of big with my flowers. At this point, it would be nice to get your opinion, pause it, and come back, but I just don't have the time to do that. So I don't know. I mean, if I just write it small, you know. Um, it won't it won't write well over this scotch tape is the problem that I think I may have unless I just write it really small down here you know what I think I'm just gonna have to go for it because it's gonna bother me if I don't try if it doesn't look good on the others I, I won't do it but and I'm just I'm writing it small Out of chaos. Comes creativity. And I didn't even write it fancy. I wrote it in my plain penmanship. Um, it would have looked nice fancy, but I, I don't feel like I have room for it to be fancy. <laughs> Um, I may not even have room on that one at all. That may be the only one I have room for, to be honest. Because I don't want it too bunched up to where you can't read it, where you would have to put on bifocals. I write small a lot of the times anyway. So I think it's just going to be on that one which at least I uh, got that thought out of my head, right? <laughs> and it, each card is unique in its own way anyway, so. Okay, what I was gonna do is I was gonna go back and add a couple more lines. Just messy lines. To where it looks like the petal has been bent. Like I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but like this line right here, you know how petals curve up. Just doing a slight curve like this makes it look, in my mind, makes it look like the petal has folded. So, um, like see right here how it just goes straight like that. I would add a little one going oops, down like this. And now it kind of looks like that petal has curved over. So that's just a little trick if you're interested. <laughs> How I do mine. I know other people have other ways and there are definitely better ways, but that's that's how I do mine. And you kind of want to think when you do those how it would naturally naturally kind of curve up. See, I, I don't know if you could see that one. But this line wasn't here, but usually those petals underneath kind of curve up, so I added one there. And here. I think these really bring out detail of flowers when you do that. And now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of my messy lines on this one. So I got, let's add a big one here because that petal is going to be really curved. Um, I'm curious to know if anybody stuck this video out to the end, till the very end, or if you fast forward it, which is okay again, but let me know because I would like to know if it's if I should just be quiet and not talk through them or speed up the process or not record the whole process since I can't, don't have time to edit it, just not record the whole process. I want your opinion. So please give it to me. I give you free permission to tell me like it is.
I love adding these little finishing touches to my flowers and the curved petals. I just think that really, in my opinion, brings the flower to life. And then let's add my messy lines there. And then, because I love my white signo pen, and I told you about that, we may, do I wanna go back and, uh, da, 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 da. normally what I do is go back in with this and kinda color up, color in my turned up petals. But I don't want the stark white to show. So, you know what? I think I'm just going to add some little dots for the inside of the flower instead of filling in my petals. Not many. Because the way it's curved up, not all of them I don't think would have that. Like that one would have it. Kind of just depends on how you view the flower, I think. That one, I feel like it's, I've got the petals going this way, so at the center would be this one. I feel like the center, you can make the center where you want, but let me kind of describe what I'm talking about. Like the petals are going this way, but see how the flower's like going out towards, oh, you can't see it. The petals going this way, but the flow of the flower is going this way with the petals curving over. So in my mind, that makes me think the center of the flower is more over here. So I'm going to add, you may view it differently, just a couple marks there. And I think it's just those two. Now what I also like to do, I like the white marks. I like to go in too with a black Sharpie because it's my all time favorite. and. I need to make sure that white signo is dried because I don't want it to be gray. And add just a couple black dots as well. So, not a lot. Just a little. Just a little as I sit there and... <laughs> Okay, almost done. One last thing that I like to do is do something to my edges. Now, a lot of times I do a, um, I did this with the last cards, if you saw those, uh, do it with my ink pad or acrylic. I said I have my inks over here, so I think I'm, do I wanna use my Stabilo all or do I wanna use my inks? I think I'll do both just so you can kind of see the process. I'll do one one way and one the other way. And then you can tell me what you think. So what I like to do this way, I could either draw directly on like I did the flower. So if you're new to Stabilo Walls, just another tip for you. You can draw directly on or you can dip it in the water like I just did and activate it that way. And then it see how it looks like ink. So just to give my make my edges pop a little bit. See how that, and then I like to go up some in the corners a little bit more. And then it's really easy to just rub that along the side. Just like that. So a Stabilo All pencil it is Aquarel Stabilo All 8046 is definitely a pencil I think every mixed media artist should have and it's just a pencil so it's not they're not really expensive I mean they're more expensive than what just a plain pencil is but you get a lot of different uses out of it now see where the scotch tape was it's not going to um, be the same you know it's gonna wipe off like that but that's okay, which I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off because I don't want that to get on. I say get on my clothes. I have paint all the time over my clothes. And it's even okay if, let me show you. I do this and let it run down and drip a little bit. 
So. Sorry if you hear that barking. My boys let their dogs, we have a lot of dogs, <gasps> out to go to the bathroom and that's what you hear. So this is one that is, I would say, complete. And this is the one that I wrote the Out of Chaos Comes Creativity on. So I would still need to write on the back. And a lot of times I would still go in and add some art marks. Like I'm very tempted into this little um, square right here, maybe do a little mark. Um, and I may do that with a, a either a pencil so it's not so bright or a pen, you know, just to give more chaos in it, you know. Um, let me show you now what how I would use the ink. So I would use either my calligraphy pen or I like to get a regular pencil, and, uh, easy, and dip that in my ink. So I love the sound of a calligraphy pen, the nib scratching on it. Um, my January cards, I did a little video clip on my Instagram where I showed and you could hear that scratchy sound. I love it. Um, but this is what I what I like to do too. So I just dip it in there. So it's essentially just like the Stabilo wall except it's it's ink. And this is um, the one I'm using here is Black India Ink by Daler Rowney. And just kind of scratching it on. And then what I like about this too, using a pencil, is you not only get the ink, but when the ink starts to wear out, you know, dry off of there, what am I trying to say? When there's, when there's not as much ink on there, you get the pencil scribblings too. So you get, you, see, you hear that? See, that's part of the pencil. So you get, um, you get a lot of different types of mark that way. So you get two different things out of one tool. So, and then again, you can make this drip or anything like that. You can splatter with this. Um, so, there's that way. And you can just kind of hold it to the side like that. And this is giving more of the pencil because the ink is more on the tip. But I like that too. You know, I'm, I'm going for the controlled chaos, so messy, but, you know, not too, too messy where you can't really tell what's going on. So that's how I would use the ink. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and let a little drop fall behind there to give a little bit of drip because I love drips as well. I don't want it to go over my flower, just, just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I need to I need to work on my camera angle so I, I know I know that needs work. Okay, so that's basically how you do that. I'm gonna go back with the um, Stabilo pencil because that's what I was talking about before just to kind of, man, they should promote me, right? Promote me, that's not the word. Uh, endorse me, there you go. See how easy that is? And like I said, you don't have to dip it in water. You can just scribble it on there and do it with the brush. I'll do that next. It's just like what we did on, on the flower. Just to make the edges pop a little bit. Okay, see here my pencil's running dry, so I'm gonna show you what just in case you forgot, which I doubt you did. Of course, this video is so long, you may have. And then just go over it with your wet brush. So, but I find this to be easier for what I'm doing. If I was wanting it more controlled, then I would probably go the other way, but. I love the mix of the stitches 
and the papers. Like again, these were just some old jelly prints that I had as the start of this. And I am just so ready to see some more flowers blooming. So, seems like I'm always creating something with flowers anyway, but you create what you enjoy doing, right? So, I do like to learn new things. I like to try new techniques and try to draw new things but I, I do really enjoy always coming back to my coming back to my florals and my botanicals and always adding stitching and so and I know it looks like I'm being messy with this part but I, I am but intentionally so that is the end of that let me wrap this video up by giving you a closer look at the finished cards. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are not a subscriber already, I would love for you to subscribe. Please like, leave a comment. It really does mean the world to me. And let me flip this around and give you a closer look. Okay, here is a closer look at the finished product. That's the one where I was able to get the title on or the quote on, but I really just didn't see like another spot on the other. So let me just do a close up of one at a time, I think. So we got the messy stitches. Jelly print in the background, the masking tape, the scotch tape, scotch tape with text and the little snippets of perforated paper that I save. Here is the second one and I think coloring that masking tape just a little bit was a good idea. And then hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as the curve of the petals. I don't know maybe that's just the way I view it. I am definitely not a professional that's just how I like to draw them. all of my messy stitches so they all are very similar but each one ends up being unique because none of the flowers are the same see this is the one where the center is off to the side and the petals are curving up towards it so and this all started out by just a blob of watercolor so just have fun, play and have fun. I definitely need to do that more with my watercolors and jelly prints. But look on the back of that, that's just from cleaning off my jelly plate and getting all those colors, it's so pretty. All right, I hope that you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, please leave a comment, let me know what you think. Um, if it was too long, just give me your opinion. I, it, it really does matter to me and I will have the links that I mentioned during the video in the description below. We'll talk to you all very soon. Happy crafting. Bye.